My name is Dominic Walker. I'm the Open Source Ecosystems Manager in the uh, Open Source and Standards Group at Red Hat. And we're here to talk to you today about uh, all the ways we're investing in the cloud native compute infrastructure and the cloud native application pieces. Most of you know Red Hat as the Linux guys or the Red Hat Enterprise Linux guys, and that's for good reason because we invest a lot of time and effort into making Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you know, one of the premier Linux platforms in the world. Uh, what we found out in the last year is that when we, um, having that strong platform makes it a ton easier to get going into the cloud native compute infrastructure space. So when we invest in technologies like Docker and Kubernetes, we're applying it on top of this rock solid Linux base that we've spent so much time developing. And my slides are not showing up. Oh, there we go. So yes, we're all in Kubernetes. You could say that this, we're all in on cloud native, all in on containers, container management, container uh, orchestration. Uh, and I'll show you in these next slides and in the demo afterwards, uh, just all the ways that we're employing container technologies into the whole stack. As was mentioned earlier this morning in the keynotes, uh, we're all software companies now. Uh, Jim Zimlin had a great slide where he showed uh, how the, the companies that are doing the best are the ones that are employing the most open source software. I suspect that if you create a slide showing how successful companies were utilizing cloud native infrastructure, that that slide would look very similar to the one he showed. Uh, IT is now the central part of the business, uh, of every business. Um, and everyone has a cloud, everyone has virtualization, everyone has these set of technologies. Uh, open source is now uh, one of the core pieces of, of everyone's infrastructure. In fact, all of the innovation happening today is happening on open source platforms. And so the question becomes, how do you turn this into some sort of cohesive whole? How do you all make it work together? How do you make it secure? Uh, how's it working over there? <laughs> cool. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you turn it into something that is reliable and dependable and, and something that meets the needs of enterprise customers, enterprise users and developers? Uh, you know, Docker has had a year or two of phenomenal growth. Um, it's, it's containers all the way down uh, as, as opposed to turtles. Uh, and what Docker has done is given us a great common uh, runtime and packaging format that we can all utilize and deploy. And it's made it easier for everyone to utilize Linux-based containers. And at Red Hat, you know, we, we love Docker. Uh, we've been using it for, we've been involved for some two years now. Uh, and we've employed it in uh, our atomic host pieces as well as uh, OpenShift. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute just, just how much we're utilizing it there. Uh, in fact, we see it kind of as the basis for you know, the future of how applications are delivered to end users. <laughs> I, I have to apologize, my, uh, my stick figure does not have clothes, uh, so I'm not as uh, proficient as, at this as the uh, jive gentleman. Uh, nonetheless, uh, so when you see, uh, containers are great, uh, but they're especially great for the part where one container running a single application. They're not so great for running multiple applications, or it's not so great when you're trying to stream together multiple containers on multiple hosts running multiple applications. How do you orchestrate them and make them work together? Uh, it becomes a, a juggling act. And so the first stage for you know, abstracting away from that is the Kubernetes piece, the first uh, orchestration piece. Uh, you look at what Kubernetes is doing uh, when, they, when they started to appear, we realized, yes, we see where this is going. This is a great thing to be a part of. We looked at several kind of orchestration technologies, but Kubernetes was the one that, uh, to us, uh, was, was the one we really wanted to invest in because it was purpose-built for container management, for one thing, and orchestration. Um, but it was also very scalable. And I don't know about you, but when Google talks about scalability, I tend to listen a bit more when they say it than other people. But creating an application, what is, how do you define an application? How do you define all the pieces of an application? When you're talking about cloud native applications, what are all the dependencies that you have to manage in deploying something like this at scale? And this is where we get you know, a little tipsy on our container boat. Uh, it, it requires a lot of skill, and unfortunately at the moment, it requires a lot of do-it-yourself sort of band-aid and duct tape uh, to put together a cloud native application. We're trying to change that. We're trying to make it well, right now, we're actually working on making it easier to develop, uh, build, package, distribute, deploy, and manage these cloud-native applications. That's, that's really what we're investing in at this time. 
And to do this, we're fully, uh, we're fully employing our upstream first dictum that we follow for uh, all of our projects and products at, at Red Hat. Um, and we followed this uh, certainly in Docker and Kubernetes, uh, which we've been strong contributors for uh, for the last two years. Um, it's through this process, this is kind of the first stage of what we do in order to go from you know, first class you know, open source communities into and transform them into you know, world class products and platforms. And you can see kind of how we're taking this technology and integrating it into uh, the full stack, uh, what we'll call the container stack. You know, it all starts with you know, the rel atomic host at the bottom and the full support for Docker, and then the layering on top of the, the Kubernetes for the orchestration bed across multiple hosts. And then you have kind of the application management side that OpenShift uh, version three supplies. And OpenShift version three is a complete rewrite to incorporate all these great upstream container technologies. So if you used OpenShift version two or before, it's, much, much, it's a much different experience because now we're kind of the, the open source platform as a service that utilizes, as first class citizens, uh, the Docker and Kubernetes pieces. Uh, on the left, you can see the Atomic app. We're making it easier to build and package these uh, uh, cloud native applications, and that's what Atomic app is for. And then you can actually manage these uh, with Manage IQ, or you may know it by its product name uh, of CloudForms. And now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Derek. So uh, I work on the OpenShift uh, product, and for folks who are following Kubernetes, they would know that Red Hat, and particularly the OpenShift uh, project itself, has been major contributors to Kubernetes from the beginning. Um, and so what I want to do is give a discussion a little bit different, where if you're coming to Kubernetes, a lot of the, like, the presuppositions involved in that is that, A, you know all about Docker, right? B, you know how to write a good Docker file. C, you never worry about updating it, or you don't know how to update it, right? We hear a lot of talks about that, but I would, I would argue that by when we moved OpenShift to Kubernetes and Docker, that the ecosystem of images that we could run and containers we run grew humongously, right? You just look at the, the Docker you know, hub and you see thousands and thousands of images. But I don't think a lot of them are good images to run. And I would argue that sometimes even myself on the right day is probably not the right person to build your image. And so one of the things that we have in, in OpenShift v3 is this concept of sourced images. Like developers are really good at writing source code, right? And, and they get it running on their laptop. Uh, and they want to hand it over to operations and have a consistent way of running it. Operations guys want to make sure that the container they run is secure, right? That it's stable, that it has a consistent control plan. And so what I want to show in today's demo is this concept of sourced images where the developer just has some existing source, but they want to run it on a Kubernetes hosted system, in this case, OpenShift. So hopefully you can see on the left-hand side is a web console we have for OpenShift Origin, our upstream project for OpenShift. On the right-hand side is just a terminal that'll show uh, the CLI some interactions. Uh, the first thing you do in OpenShift is you create a project. So one of the things that we add on top of upstream Kubernetes is like a rich authorization and role-based access control system. And so here you, the end user would create a project. This could be something administrators can deploy to their end users or developers, or it's like a self-service thing. A developer comes in, I just want to run something on the cluster. They create their project. So when you, when you look to bring Kubernetes into your enterprise and you're really excited that you have a, a full cluster of computing pa uh, power to take advantage of, you want to put some quotas on there, right? So you'll see on the left-hand side, uh, within the project settings pane, you can set some quotas, some CPU limits, some memory limits, and you can say how much, how much resources pods in this project can actually consume. And so on the right-hand side, you see we now have a project, and I'm switching the context to it, and the admin has gone and applied some quotas. So the next thing the developer wants to do is they like, just want to run their code, right? So here we'll click the getting started, and there's a lot of things you can do to get started. So in OpenShift, we provide a lot of quick starts or templates. So for example, here on the system, I took a lot of the Red Hat uh, middleware portfolio. But what I want to do is something a little more unique than that, which is I just have a source code repository with my source, right? I, I'm a Node.js developer. I know Node, and that's all I care to know, and I want to run it on the system. And so I went and took my Git repo from my Node app, paired it with a builder image that said, this is where I want to take my source and apply it to. Some simple configuration settings, like how many replicas I want to run, do I want a router, when do I want my deployments to change when I change my code, click one button, off you go, and it's gone and take my source code in Git, uh, GitHub, and it's created Kubernetes services, Kubernetes pods, Kubernetes replication controllers, and at the same time, it's gonna build an image with my source to actually make it runnable on the Kubernetes control plane. And these builds are actually running on the Kubernetes infrastructure itself. So uh, it's kind of neat. Um, 
won't go too much in detail here, but what you'll see on the right is the build got kicked off. And so you can do some neat things, like follow the build logs and like see how your source is being built. And at the end, you're gonna get a resultant image that gets pushed to a Docker registry. And once it's been pushed, we have this concept of deployments in OpenShift that will see that a new image has been built and then automatically go and run it. So you can see on the overview page, we now have a pod running, it's fronted by a service that has an IP. And because it's a video, click it, there's my Node app running, right? So in like two seconds, uh, a developer knew nothing about Docker. We gave them some trusted base images to build against, so they're building secure, viable images, like they're not running as root, they're following good SE Linux practices. Operators can feel secure that the things that the developer's running are good things. And you have an app running and it's pretty cool, right? And without having to go too low level, geeking on a ton of things that developers may not want to know. So with that, wraps up the demo, and thank you very much. Thank you.